conspiracy alert. He's put all the leaves into one square. It's flat, and then he's gone and left it all. I've just been talking about flat earth. I think somebody is messing with my mind. <laughs> flat earth, indeed. Confirmed by the leaf man down at these docks. Awesome. Hello and welcome to another video from Paraplays. Uh, no, I'm not. I should be going to go get my air cut. Look at the bloody state of it now. It's getting huge. I'm going to go down to Royal Armouries and I'm going to have a look at some real weapons. So this one's going to be a bit more of a lifestyle vlog. One of those out and about videos. So let's crack on down to Royal Armouries. Have a little sniff around. So where we are down at the dry dock and for those of you who don't know this area has all been redone up especially when the uh, was it the tour de, tour de Yorkshire or whatever and there's something else happening down here at the minute I can't actually remember what it is something big so there's a lot of redevelopment actually happening down here and really for me even though I've lived in Leeds for you know, 30 odd 35 years never really come down here there's just not enough down here to warrant walking all the way out of the centre of town and actually coming down here but there is some cool buildings and stuff down here and there's the Royal Armoury there not exactly a grand entrance but it is what it is and I don't know it never really seems to be that busy down here Ooh. what's going on here then Stormtroopers. Sorry. I presume there's a Star Wars event on. No, really. <laughs> Don't know what it is, but it looks like Star Wars. Let's go in, have a look around. And uh, let's go and have a look at the weapons. We want Hall of Steel. We want the... Uh, I don't know, which one do we want? This is what we want. Now there are shotguns. And there are shotguns. Have a look at this beast. <laughs> Fuck you. <hell. laughs> and if you thought that one were a beast, wait till you see the one on the other side. Even if you, it were a sawn off shotgun, it'd still be four and a half foot long. Have a look. I mean, what the hell were they thinking? Holy crap. And if I pull back a little bit so you can see it all, hopefully that's all in. Look at the barrel on that mother. And there's some more over here. Look at these. Look at that. That's a flintlock fouling gun for shooting ducks. Good God, was there anything left, left of the duck after you shot it with that? That barrel must be nearly six foot, seven foot long. And if you're wondering how they actually used this, I can actually show you. Because over here they've got a demonstration. And that is how you use a fouling gun. So there you go, you learn something every day. Lay down in a small boat, in prone, with your <laughs> ridiculous shotgun. And at the end of the day, all you shoot in is little wildfowl like this. Don't seem right somehow. But anyway, 
that's what that is. You learn something every day. Actually, believe it or not, it's going to be too dark on the video, I know. But actually, wearing these, this glove uh, with this full set of armor on is actually really, really maneuverable. And it does give you a lot of protection there. That's awesome, actually. Easily grab that. Quite easily. It feels really quite good. Quite impressed. It seems a lot of these old revolvers uh, from around the 1800s, 1865, a lot of these were made in Birmingham, which is incredible because all Birmingham gives us now is taxi drivers, welfare and curry houses. So, <laughs> bad boy Andy. But yeah, the real sense of history of the people who actually made and used these, it's just incredible, all those people gone, you know. They had friends, they had fights, they had lovers, arguments, laughter, just gone. I think every f four generations or so are just completely forgotten about. How many people do we know from that era? Do you even know your great great granddad's name? It's a shame really. Uh, something I wish I'd done when I had the opportunity. 1930. Twenty. Look at that. Beautiful. Nine forty-two. Yeah, but do you know, I've fallen out with two people this week over my theories on flat Earth and uh, various other conspiracies about NASA and things like that. And it's really sad, really, that it's come to that. And what it tends to be is, is that they'll just ridicule you, even though they've been taught these things from a child at primary school. They've got no more evidence that, that certain things are this way than I have the other way, but I, I'll give evidence on why I think it. And they'll just ridicule you, call you an idiot. And then eventually when you snap back at them for calling you an idiot, they then say you're being an arsehole and you're forcing your views on them. These people are just not worth the time. They're not going to be open-minded enough to listen to other people's views without slagging them off. And fine. It's not even worth discussing these things with these people. I do have very strong views on a lot of things, as my close friends know. But real friends are not going to fall out of you, no matter what your opinions are. A little rant over there. Needless to say, it is what it is. Nobody's ever going to change my mind. And that's what I think every man should have his own opinions and stick to them, no matter what people say. Peace out. It's one of those places in here where there are so many weapons, it's just impossible to look at everything. And I find that after about a couple of hours, I've already had enough. It might actually be a bit dark in here, for you to be able to see anything. But a lot, not a lot of people know outside of my local close group of friends. My nickname's actually Jap, because I was obsessed with all things Japanese. I did. Uh, I did jujitsu for a while. I love samurai films and, and films by Akira Kurosawa. Uh, Toshiro Mifune is one of my all time favourite actors. So there you go, you see. I always used to love it down here looking at all the ancient samurai stuff. And we'll have a, look, a quick look now, even though we're looking at some modern military stuff. We can't be down here without actually looking at some of the samurai armour and weapons because I absolutely love it. It's weird when you start filming, people just want to come up and stand right next to you and have a good go up at what you're doing. <laughs> guns, guns, guns. This is where it all began really, I guess. All these sort of weapons. What have we got over here? Rimfire target rifle. 1965. Don't say what rounds it fires. That barrel is quite beefy. If you've never been to the Royal Armouries and, and you're interested in the whole history and the military aspect, you'll absolutely love it down here. There's so much to see down here and it's right on your doorstep. I do forget sometimes. That's like the old Gat gun. 
I used to go down to the woods when I was little. You'd push the end in, unscrew the back, and put a dart in like that with, and shoot each other. Absolutely fucking mental. You wouldn't dream of doing that now. You took a bloody eye out. Wanking this. Baton. I have one of these. We just love to club somebody, some chav with one of these, I would. Get down to Dover, leave it Andy. <laughs> Brass knuckles. Or in this case, silver knuckles. Look at that, an offensive weapon. And one which a policeman would certainly consider should not be carried away anywhere in public. Oh, that was like I was going to say, a police are allowed it. Yeah, certainly going to work to get quite a one of them. Taser. What else have we got down here? No more, no more modern military stuff. Well, the odd little bit here, but it's not exactly what we were looking for. Now, they do an airsoft variant of that that looks exactly the same as the real thing. It's brilliant. They've got one down at patrol base. I picked it up a few times and thought I'd love one just for my collection of airsoft weapons for no other reason. I wouldn't actually use it unless they had a gangster's... Uh, Gangsters day and a gangsters evening. The Thompson. Dirty Harry. Big SW44 revolver, an iconic face from the movie is this is a 44 Magnum, the most powerful handgun in the world. Awesome. Klashnikov. Actually, a lot smaller in real life than you actually think they are. You know, in the games and stuff, when we use these, they look a lot bigger than that. But that's actually really quite small. I know it's got the folding stock, but I mean in general. I've had a look at these as well for Airsoft. Another iconic weapon that I think I will add to my collection at some point when I get my gun wall going. Tomahawks. I've got so much stuff down here, it's unbelievable. Now that is an early artillery piece. Wow. Beast of a thing. A three barreled matchlock gun from India, 18th century. Three barrels are mounted side by side in a plain wood stock. A powder tray on the top connects all touch holes when the lighted match is placed in the powder tray. All three barrels are discharged at once. Awesome. Wouldn't want to be on the end of that, that's for sure. Now, while I'm down here, I've actually got a friend who really loves the red coats and that whole Napoleonic era. So, I will, I think, actually down here, there is a little section. There's probably a lot more, but I haven't had time to walk around. But it's just so cool down here. So many things. I mean, look at this. and this was one of King Henry's it's just awesome they've got such an iconic style the old English stuff that we've got just the the stylization of it all I mean it's just although let's be honest you are a bit of a target on the battlefield if you decide to go out with that on your head it's like I'm over here I'm over here but yeah I do love all the English armor and everything else like that I just love our English history look at that it's awesome Right, so down here there's a little bit of red coat stuff. There is actually a whole exhibition on it, so my friend who's called Red, who's into all this stuff, it might be worth you popping down and having a look at this stuff at some point. There certainly is quite a lot for you to learn if you're interested in all this sort of stuff.
I was just having a little sniff around in this shop on the way out. I've got these military Lego. <laughs> it's quite cool, isn't it? You got kids. And down here, they've got military t-shirts and stuff, including the little kids' tack vests. <laughs> awesome. How much are they? <laughs> 19 quid. That's quite cool, isn't it, if your dad's in the military. And they actually do the helmets as well, which is unbelievable. 12 quid. Bit of fun, isn't it? You can get one of them for airsoft. Piggy box. Oh, do you remember these when we were kids? You said we used to throw them up and they had a parachute on them. That's it then. That's just a little quick look around, around the memories. Obviously, you could spend literally all day in there. There is so much to see and do. But I thought it might be interesting just to have a look around. It's a pity that they haven't got more of the actual military weapons in there. But maybe that's, the, as I said, the Falklands one has gone purely so they can get the adjunct core stuff in. But it's still a good day out and it's free. The only thing you pay for is the car park, which is currently around four quid if you stay for about three hours. Yeah, good day out. For some reason, about four or five years ago when I was down here, I was actually looking at renting one of these apartments over here. But I'm going to show you in a minute behind me. I thought, yeah, what a beautiful place, right near the centre. It's not too far away, about a mile away. And as you can see, all those flats up there around me. I thought, yeah, really nice place. Until I found out that some of them were six to seven hundred pounds a week. Yes, slightly out of my price range. And who in the right mind can afford nearly three grand a month just on rent? That's not to buy. That's to rent. Fucking insane. In the membrane. Obviously, some people are earning a lot more money than what I am. Fact. So I've popped in bar 29, never been here before, and I thought, you know what, a few cheeky women walk past. <laughs> Why not? But this block here, doing the leaves, just shows you how you make your own path in life. Yeah, cheers, thanks, Doug. I'll just get your soup Nice one, Doug. Anyone else? You might absolutely love doing that job. You never can tell. My soup is here. Soupy goodness. Cheers, Doug. <laughs>